The Ukrainian army is under threat of encirclement in the district of Kurakovo in the Donetsk region, Build analyst Julian Ropp reports. Russian troops advance to the Kurakovo reservoir from the northeast and southwest, capturing the village of Maximovka. Due to the lack of reserves and defensive lines, the Ukrainian armed forces may fall into a trap and, probably, will be forced to retreat from 20 populated areas to the southeast of Andrivka, Ropp writes. Irlower he noted that in early October, Russian troops broke through from Mariinka and reached the shores of the Kurakovsko Reservoir, and captured the city of Ukrainsk to the north. According to Ropk, a semi-cauldron with the center in Kurakovka formed between these two directions, which the Russian armed forces have now completely captured. According to him, in two weeks the Russians occupied six villages and 50 square kilometers of territory in this area. Ropk also noted that at the same time the Russian army is approaching the Kurakovka reservoir from the southwest, from near Volodar, where it captured five villages and about 200 square kilometers of territory in two weeks. The front line is currently near the village of Maximovka, 15 kilometers from the reservoir and the city of Kurakovo. In the southeastern direction, the village of Katerinovka, 12 kilometers from Kurakovo, has been taken, summed up Repki. In a report published on November 1, analysts from the U.S. Institute for the Study of War reported that in the Kurakovo direction, the Russians had advanced to the southwestern administrative borders of the village of Kurakovka, northeast of Kurakovo and had likely captured the settlement. At the same time, ASW noted that Ukrainian forces had recently regained positions in the wooded area southwest of Pobeda and southeast of Kurakovo. According to analysts, the Russians have also advanced near Maximilianivka, Novoselodivka, Maximivka, and Vovchenka in Donetsk region, as well as near Verbov in Zaporizhia region. Russian occupation forces have occupied the village of Stepanovka in the Kramatorsk district of Donetsk region. In addition, tactical advancement of the enemy is observed in the village of Kolesnikovka in the Kharkov region and in the areas of Kremenea Baka in the Donetsk region. Russian forces have also managed to regain their position near Sheptakivka in Kursk region. Thousands of North Korean troops are currently concentrated in the Kursk region and are expected to join the fight in the coming days to bolster the Russian army. But the Ukrainian military will also receive important aid to counter the Russian onslaught. The latest aid package from the U.S. includes at least 212 striker armored vehicles. As Forbes analyst David Axe notes, most of the strikers transferred to Ukraine are already in the Kursk region, so it is likely that additional vehicles will also be transferred to this area. As the analyst explains, taking into account the loss of about two dozen strikers in combat, the new delivery from the US will increase the number of these armored vehicles in the Ukrainian armed forces to almost 400. At the same time, Ukraine usually distributes them among assault brigades three battalions with 31 vehicles in each brigade. Previous batches of strikers were enough to equip the 80th and 82nd assault brigades, which in early August allocated battalions for the invasion of Kursk. The third assault brigade, the 95th, is also in Kursk, and it does not yet have these vehicles. The analyst notes, emphasizing that it makes sense to equip this brigade now in order to equalize its forces with the other two. The maneuverable striker, with its top speed of 60 miles per hour, is well suited to the chaotic urban combat and rapid road assaults that characterize the fighting in the Kursk region. In addition to being fast and maneuverable, the vehicle is a good observation and firing platform for top-mounted sensors and weapons, Axe said. At the same time, he added that in conditions of an acute shortage of people, the new strikers are most likely the only assistance that the Ukrainian military in the Kursk region will receive. According to Ukrainian intelligence, Russia has deployed more than 7,000 North Korean troops to the borders of Ukraine. It is noted that they were armed, in particular with 60mm mortars and AK-12 assault rifles. At the end of October, the US State Department announced that 
There were about 10,000 North Korean troops in Russia, of which about 8,000 were in the Kursk region. It was then reported that this contingent could take part in combat operations in the coming days. As stated by the commander of the 24th Separate Assault Brigade, Aidar Stanislav Bunyatov, Russian troops have reduced their activity in the Kursk region. This may be due to the regrouping of troops and the entry of North Korean soldiers into positions. Thousands of opposition supporters rallied outside Georgia's parliament for a second straight Monday to denounce the October 26 election as illegitimate after the ruling party was declared the winner amid allegations of vote rigging helped by Russia. The protesters, who waved Georgian and European Union flags, demanded a new parliamentary elections under international supervision and an investigation of the alleged ballot irregularities. Opposition leaders vowed to boycott sessions of parliament and hold regular protests until their demands are met. The protest took place under the watch of riot police, reflecting the simmering political tensions in the South Caucasus country of 3.7 million that lies between Russia and Turkey. The Central Election Commission said the ruling Georgian Dream Party won about 54% of the vote. Its leaders have rejected the opposition's claims of vote fraud. Announce itself as a legitimate representative of the Georgian people because they stole that they have stolen an election. It's a special operation backed by the Russians when Georgian people will be stolen, and we will never accept that. We have two, let's say, directions. One, one is the street protest. We are starting from Tbilisi, but we will have the protests all around the country. Second is the legal framework. We are collecting evidences. We already sent to international uh, observers that uh, the, the, the facts that uh, election were massively rigged, and that is why we have all rights to demand a new election. So CC should cancel these elections. And the third layer is uh, we are asking our friends, uh, our friendly countries, democratic states, not to recognize elections which were rigged from Georgian people. As a Georgian citizen, I'm angry that we are not on a European Union path at all for now. So uh, these elections was frauded. We have all the evidences and uh, we need to push our government in order to make sure that the elections should be in a fair and a free uh, terms to be conducted. So for sure we are here, the people, angry people, I'm sure the people will come here and more and more day by day. This is a long lasting process. It's not last for a few days, it will last a few weeks, few months. And I urge our opposition as well to be more proactive and also as well as the people here in Georgia.